Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Kent, and we're Living Light RV. And we are grabbing life by the tail. Today we have a special Thanksgiving special for you. Q&A. It is a question and answer period. So we, we've, we've been asked some questions. So we, we want to get back to you on those yep. and uh, cover quite a few bases. So here we go. Alrighty, so the first question, okay. Some of these questions are actually our own questions, questions that we had before we started this journey. Yeah. Uh, but the first one is just a clarification. Last week I said that Bessie gets 15 miles to the gallon. Yeah, that wasn't the yeah. same. That wasn't right. <laughs> okay, my bad. When I calculated it, I forgot that Bessie's odometer is actually in kilometers, not in miles. So I had to rework all the numbers. Bessie's actually getting just over nine miles to the gallon, which we think is still pretty good. We'll take it. We'll take it. We don't have a choice. <laughs> That's what it gets. So, That's what we got. Yeah, so I'm sorry for that. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but we did also ask a question of our viewers last week. You asked the question. What was it? All right, so we're on the beach. And if anybody knows what this is, why don't you let me know? It's really interesting. And he said, what kind of seashell is this? And Julie got it right. It is a... It's a giant gumboot chitin or chitin c-h-i-t-o-n there you go so thanks julie for giving us the answer on that good job she and, nailed it okay another question that we get quite often we've had it a couple of times actually did it really take us just two weeks to renovate the motorhome and the answer to that question is yes, yes. it did actually yes. we bought bessie we brought her home on september 10th and we left for our full-time life on september uh 26th yeah which is 16 days, but really the day, the first day and the last day weren't really renovating days. They were more moving days. So yeah, 14 days 14 to days. get all of that work done. You can check out that video here. Kent will put a link there to our renovation video. You can see kind of, well, there's a couple of different videos. It's a renovation videos. series. Yeah, it's more of a series, but there is also like sort of the big reveal as well. You can check that out. We have a question from an Instagram follower. If you want to follow us on Instagram, just go to Instagram and check out Living Light RV. You'll find us there. We quite often do um, live updates there. So if you want to find out what campground we're in, what area of the country we're in, you'll be able to see that on Instagram more than YouTube. YouTube can be a bit delayed. We're pretty good about keeping it fairly um, real time, fairly close to real time, but that yeah. may fluctuate as things go. But Instagram will always be more real time. This is from Freeway 4? Yes, Freeway 4 asks, how's the spray paint and general remodel holding up? All right, there will be an upcoming video called How Not to Renovate an RV. That should be coming oh, in the next in the couple next months. Three weeks, three <laughs> no months. No guarantees, but we definitely have that on our radar. We want to show you kind of the things that we did not necessarily wrong, but we would have done them differently had we had more information or more time more or time. whatever. So we will be covering that in more detail. But just to satisfy your question, Freeway 4, the spray paint is holding up fairly well. I wouldn't yeah. recommend it as a long-term solution, but as a short-term, it's working out great. So Where is it not holding up? It is along the edges of the counter, you know, kind of where, you're, where, you're, where you touch it all the time. It's starting to kind of wear away as well as right along the edges of the sink. So yeah. that's where I'm noticing that's kind of wearing away. It's also not super easy to clean and I don't know if that's because of the finish that I got. The finish that I used is a matte finish. And I think if you use more of a glossy finish, it'd probably be easier to clean. But okay. anyway, I will cover more detail on that when we do the next, when we do that video, the uh, how not to renovate an RV video. But yeah, just know if you're planning on doing that, really it's not long-term. No. No, and the next Short question... Term. Or it might be good for a weekend in camping. Camper, oh, for sure. If you're not living yeah, in a full time. a light use. Hey, yeah. Randy Rainwater had a question for us. Yes. When you buy a Toad, what will you be looking for? And the answer is, we both like the Mini Cooper. They're so cute. They're so cute. We would tow bar it, so it would be all four down, and it wouldn't be that much more of a drag on the vehicle, and we can unhook and go lots of places and lots of uh, discovery with that vehicle. So yeah. that's what we're thinking might be down the road. We also want to do a flat deck uh, trailer and put on a couple of motorcycles. Yeah. So we're going to have to figure out how to, which one goes first. Yeah, that might be a longer down the road situation. We'll have to see. But definitely Mini Cooper motorcycles, those are at the top of our list for, yes. for getting a tow at some Absolutely. Day. Yeah. Alrighty. Then I have a question from 
Flaming Colt. She's an Instagram follower as well. And yeah. her question is, I love wardrobe details. How many items did you keep, etc.? So I didn't count all my clothes because that would just take forever. And most of them are yeah. actually in the dirty laundry right now. <laughs> so, but I did but count all of our shoes. We went and did our all of our footwork. We did a footwork count. Ready? We have... Should I read out the whole list? Well, yeah, but you didn't do uh, versus me versus you. Oh, yeah, so Ken's all excited because he wins because he has less footwear than I do. But thank you, Flaming Colt, for this question because all of a sudden I went, okay, we need to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Which we do. Really. Go. Lisa's list says, two pairs of sandals, a pair of flip-flops, flats, runners, rubber boots, uh, pant boots, dress boots, cowboy boots, dressy sandals, water shoes, and slippers. My Next list, list says is sandals, runners, uh, dress shoes, two pairs of... Uh, Slip-ons, uh, winter boots, cowboy boots, uh, loafers, and slippers. So that's 19 pairs of footwear plus the slippers. So I guess 21 technically if you count slippers. Alrighty, next question is. Right next there. question is uh, YouTube subscriber Jerry Harrington. His question is: We were wondering why they call it a Class A or Class B or Class C. Do you need a different license to drive a Class A? Here's my understanding: As the industry started to change since the 50s. Uh, and all of these types of rigs became very different and very set by the manufacturers. Uh, class A, Class B, Class C, they were actually really more the industry saying this is what it is. And a Class A is, a, is built on a chassis where the entire motor coach is built onto that chassis. A Class C is when the, the chassis and the front cab is all from the motor uh, company. Uh, ch with the chassis and then the motor coach uh, company builds on top of that cab mm -hmm. and then a class B is a complete unit that is remodeled on the inside to accommodate camping. Jerry's other question is do we need a different license to drive a class A and I think that depends on which state you live in. Yeah. Uh, we live in Alberta that's where all of our, ve our vehicle is registered that's where that's our province of residence and we do not need to have a special license no. to drive a class A. All right, next question is an Instagram follower, Valerie Marie, and she asked us a long time ago, Valerie, I'm sorry it took, a, took us so long to get to this. Um, her, she has two questions, which is better, a dealership versus private when it comes to purchasing your RV, and what sort of credit is needed for a dealership? So I think it will depend on your personal situation, whether yeah. you buy it from a dealership or whether you buy it new, or buy it used. Um, some of those things to consider would be your financial situation, um, your ability to fix things yeah. and whatever your specific needs are. So we are pretty flexible in what we required. We just basically needed it to fit two people full time. So we we can look basically at anything on the used market. Yeah. Um, and we know we know a lot of people that have bought new. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And Kent's pretty handy. So between Kent and my dad, who's an RV guy, they can usually figure out anything that's not working properly. The other thing is. Um, I've heard, and I don't know for sure, but I've heard that a lot of brand new RVs aren't necessarily problem free. So uh, you can get a brand new RV that you might think, oh good, I will never have to work on it, I don't have to fix it. Well, and I have warranty. That, well, uh, yeah, well, well when, sure you have warranty. When you're 3,000 miles away and you yeah. need warranty work done, uh, where are you going to stay? For how long? And all these problems, Especially you know. Especially if you're living in it. So we've so, heard a lot of people that said, you know what, buying two years old after the problems have all been warranty fixed could be even better. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely going to be a personal thing. As far as what sort of credit is needed, we really don't know. You'll have to call your local dealership and yeah. find that out. So, Okay, so one of the questions I had before we bought an RV was the whole concept of, of having motion sickness. I had several salesmen say to me, steer way clear of a class A if you have any kind of motion sickness. Yeah. And I do struggle with that. So we didn't even consider class A's for a really long time. No. And then this one just kind of came up and it felt like the right thing to get. And guess what? I don't get sick in this vehicle as a passenger and I think the biggest reason is because it has a huge window I have amazing view from where I'm sitting yeah and as long as I don't don't read while we're driving on a windy road because we did that was that today or yesterday it was yesterday yesterday and I wasn't feeling so good after that but if I'm just looking out the window and it's you know fairly easy driving no motion sick so don't let that stop you if someone tells you that it's a myth it's not true so the next question is is it hard to drive a motorhome and the answer I've found is no, it's not hard to drive. It is, uh, I've had experience driving vehicles this size uh, quite a bit for a number of years. I drove a vehicle that was this size. So I found it uh, just as good to drive this vehicle as, uh, as other commercial trucks. Yeah, and I think I've driven Bessie a few times as well. And 
I also have driven school bus, but I think if you had not ever driven a large vehicle, it would take some getting used yes. to for sure. But it's not hard. It's not. It's not difficult to drive no a motorhome now she's not a big motorhome she's only 28 feet if you're getting a big 30 or 40 foot rig that's going to be a bit a lot different and but, towing yeah so yeah i say go for it give it a shot it's not really that hard practice on big wide roads until you're comfortable and then kind of move into the smaller roads and yeah yeah you get used to it pretty quickly so alrighty. the next question is from the instagram follower live tiny or try and her question is, was there anything you thought you'd miss that you realized you don't? And that's in regards to downsizing. And again, you asked this question a long time ago. Sorry it took us so long to get to it. But I have an answer. Kent, what do you not... How did she say it? One was thing I thought, thought I'd miss, that you don't? but I don't. And that it's the size of our fridge. I thought, we won't be able to put anything in it. <laughs> and it's not true. We actually put a lot in it. It's fine. It works I'm gonna fine. Starve. <laughs> totally works. Okay, that's cool. And for me, the thing that I thought I would miss that I don't are two things. My Christmas decorations, which I will get into in a second, and my piano. I thought for sure I would miss that. And I did miss the piano when we were in the funnel, Yes. but I don't miss it now that we're on the road. So there you go. And Chris, speaking of Christmas decorations, the yeah. next question is from Instagram follower Cassley. There we go. And she asks, saw a Christmas stocking in the background. Like there's that one, one there, and that and one there. One there. Um, am I putting up a Christmas tree and are we doing more decorations? So here's the tree right there. And I did buy a Christmas tree uh, just from Walmart, I think it was. Yeah. And it's so cute. It's four feet and it's it's just perfect for, for the decorations that I have. Uh, I'll get Kent to show you. This was the this was the collection of Christmas decorations that I had before we downsized. It was several bins. Took up a whole wall in my house just in the bins. Mm -hmm. And I've downsized now to just this. There's like one box. Was one box of decorations. And then there's like a, a nativity scene that's like flat cardboard. And then there's a package of Christmas movies and CDs. We get to start watching Christmas movies. I love it. So anyway, I've downsized a ton of Christmas stuff. And yes, I have decorated for Christmas. Um, I did buy some Christmas lights on the that are at the front of the rig. I've got a set that I'm going to put on the awning as soon as it stops raining and we have some nicer weather. Um, oh, speaking of the rain, yeah, we are very thankful for the rain. We are right now camping just south of the Paradise um, fire situation yeah. in California. North of uh, Sacramento. Yeah, and they finally got rain. I think it started last night and everybody here is pretty thankful for that and it's Thanksgiving tomorrow for our American friends. So happy Thanksgiving yes. and we are very thankful for the rain. So we're certainly not complaining about it this time. Anyway, so that's what Christmas looks like in the motorhome uh, as far as decorations goes. The next question we have, I've got two people who've asked this question. Yeah. Uh, Instagram follower BJ Petzold and YouTube follower Carolyn from Diary of a Family. And speaking of Diary of a Family, they're the ones that we met a couple weeks ago. So you can check out that video here and go check out their channel. They're, they're a really fun family it's living full time on the road as well. So the questions are, what do you do on Sundays? How have you kept up with your spiritual life? Do you visit a local church uh, in the area or do you watch your home church live on social media? I'll take on that one. Go for it. Uh, when we can, uh, we would uh, definitely visit a local church. Uh, if we are going to be in transit or on the road or it doesn't make sense, uh, we will uh, link to our uh, home church, which is calvarychapel.ca. And off of their front uh, webpage, uh, you can watch their services live. And they have a 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock service. So if you're looking for a live stream church to watch, we highly recommend Rocky Mountain Calvary Chapel because it's a Bible teaching church, verse by verse, line by line and it's fantastic. Pastor Glenn does an amazing job and then we have other pastors as well that preach on Sunday mornings yeah. and and we always feel like we're a little bit at home when we watch the live stream because exactly. that's our home church. We've been there for over 10 years and we all, lots of our friends are there and it's just kind of cool to, to feel like we're connecting with that church family. Um, what else do we do? Oh yes. Now again, if you watched last week's video, we don't have a toad, we only have Bessie, so getting to church on Sunday morning can be a little tricky. But we did manage to do that a few weeks ago when we were near Bellingham, and we actually 
uh, packed up the motorhome, went to church, and then hit the road for our next destination. That was fantastic to just be that was great. in an actual church service with, with fellow believers. So we would like to do that more often, and we're going to try and make that happen whenever we can. So yes. that is great. And you know what? One thing I really do miss, though, is my ladies' Bible studies. So ah, I miss it so much, and I'm not really sure how to fix this problem other than I'm looking. I'm gonna look into doing an online study in January. Whether I just go as an attendee or whether I teach a Bible study in January, I need to start researching that and figure that out. So, if you're interested in joining an online Bible study, let me know, and we'll see what we can put up, put together. I think we're there. This one. Okay. Next question, Instagram follower BJ Petzold again, and she asks us, "Will we be in Arizona by December 15th?" No. Ah, if you're gonna be there, I wish we were gonna be there, but we're actually not planning on being in Arizona that early. We will be spending Christmas in Southern California. Yes. So that's going to be fantastic. And uh, then we will we will be in Arizona about mid, mid to end of January. Yeah. So that's where we'll be for Christmas holidays. So that's going to be fantastic. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Do you have anything wow. else you want to say? No. Good. I'm good. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys for watching. And as always, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button below if you haven't done so already. And if you hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe, you will get notified every time we put out a new video. We're thinking we might try and do some more live videos once in a while. So you'll see our regular Thursday videos. And then occasionally we'll just pop up, do a live, say hello, and then carry on from there. Thank you for Is that your... news to you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you gave me Thank that you. look like, what? We're doing live videos? <laughs> Thank you for your questions and your comments. Yes. Thank you so much, you guys, for being part of our YouTube community. Take care. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.